Hey guys, I want to continue and share with you my do-yourself DRO setup here on this mini mill. Um, but before I do that, I want to give, I hope, a quick background. Sometimes it's not. This is all ad hoc. I haven't scripted any of this. I ran into a post on Facebook Marketplace, oh, about six months ago. Wasn't even looking to buy a um, mini lathe, machine mini lathe, or mill. Not at all, wasn't looking to buy one. Although about 15 years ago, I had a Harbor Freight uh, seven by 10 and used it for a little while and figured that I didn't use it enough and got rid of it. There's a gentleman here in Austin who does a lot of uh, off-road motorcycle, um, dirt bike, Baja stuff, a lot of suspension fabrication, bracket fabrication, uh, cockpit, you name it, uh, handles, shifters, all that stuff. He's got a nice shop. At any rate, he had these two machines, this little machine shop, 3990 um, mini mill, and this 3536. Uh, this is an eight and a half by 16. They don't sell this model at little machine shop anymore, but they sell every part, including all the controller boards, every part which is something I really like about Little Machine Shop because I've, I've replaced a few parts on this machine. But he had this machine and this machine both listed for 600 cash. Immediately, I responded, where are you at? I'm coming now, I've got cash in hand. So now that I've got these machines, I really don't have them set up um, in the best of place places. <clears throat> I have a small area here in this uh, two-car garage and uh, now that our uh, boys are all grown and we're starting uh, the process of downsizing and selling the house later on and moving out, um, these machines are going to be my, I don't know, happy machines, uh, fun machines, retirement machines here in 10 years or so. Um, so I'm tuning them and improving them for my needs. Okay, I'm not a heavy fabricator. Um, I don't know what it is about making ships. It's just soothing, takes my mind off of things. So there's the preface. Now on to the do-it-yourself DRO. I already posted the, the Z axis on this uh, movable head, fixed column, movable head, and that I got the idea from a post by George Waitman. He, uh, he had one on his tail stock and carriage stop for carriage movement. And um, I started looking at the bits and pieces and this is the key piece here, this um, digital uh, wheel marking gauge. Oftentimes you see these in wood uh, format and it's got a round disc scribe there. This is the reference fence right here. And um, anyway, you put it up against the um, jointed edge of a board to mark where you want to, whatever. Now, um, he's repurp repurposed this, and actually, I don't know if it's his idea. Uh, there's another guy on another on another forum or another board uh, page, Facebook page, that set used this as well. So, my local Rockler, with their 20% off, which they run occasionally for like two weeks straight, most things in the store, 20% off, as long as they're not on sale and they're big saws or whatever. So I walked out the door, um, $33 later, roughly, out the door, tax tag and title for these. And I have one, two, three. I really need four. This third one, I don't know if it's going to be my why yet. Uh, that's something I want to ask you guys in this video. Uh, or if it's going to be put on my tail stock. I think I want to start working on the fixtures for mounting it on my tail stock and actually make that one also movable down to a carriage stop that I need to fabricate or buy. And with, with the magnet like this here to attach to the carriage at any rate. So for the Z again, just, just to show you guys for the Z again, this is just 6061 aluminum, a block of aluminum, cut with my bandsaw, uh, milled down to uh, the dimensions I needed. Uh, it's got a M10 bolt that goes into the head, 
which is part of that spring mechanism uh, that used to be here. It used to be a mechanical spring for lift. Now I have gas. And then it's got a magnet here. And then what I did is this uh, square, three quarter inch square, I think, steel stock here, tapped in, tapped in here. And this can come down. That's a rare earth magnet. It's countersunk. Um, I can give the part from a magnetic supply shop they were they were not expensive at all and if we come over here turn this on zero this as you can see moves just fine i've already used this it's wonderful whenever i engage the the fine adjust here the fine adjust it's really 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 nice i actually use this to fabricate this block for the um, socket cap counterbore there uh, for the socket cap fasteners there. At any rate, too, another thing that's really good about this is um, there's no way for me to damage this uh, caliper. If I go, um, let's see, did I lock that? Let's see, what did I do? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got to disengage. Sorry about that. So I could go up or down. But at the same time, if I'm all the way, let me move this, let me move this down to about right there. Let me go up. There's a screw on the back of this. Well, I gotta move it a little bit more. Bear with me here. There's a screw on the back of this that you'll see here. See how that pops free? So there's no way for the mechanical moving of this head to damage this device here um, in both directions and i have full range i don't need a lot of range because i don't have a lot of range as most people know for z so this is this is working great no way to damage this guy it's out of the way um, it's back behind everything i can push that up when i don't want to use it what i am going to have to do though is get a little ziploc bag plastic bag and put around this because as i start to cut ferrous materials it's going to stick to this magnet so I like that setup. Um, it's an adjustable on one end. Uh, you know, it's, it's not fixed is what I'm trying to say. This end of the caliper is not screwed into something fixed like this is. And I might change that in the near future. So that's the Z. Now moving on over to X. Here's my X setup. Um, everything is clear of the bed. Um, the working surface. This is a stop block. Uh, it has spring loaded uh, stop pin in here. I just leveraged this to hold the gauge. I did flip the gauge. Um, you have to be very careful. There's a brass gib uh, that's inside of here. Uh, this is an M3 by 0 0.5 uh, end here where that metal scribe that disc is and then it's got a little nub on the end and I counterboard that there. And that's a three by 0 0.5 by 40 millimeter fastener here. And, you know, I just tapped. There was already an existing hole. I didn't have to do anything except I did mill out a little bit right there. A little, a little rabbit, a little rabbit right there because this little rivet here. So as I take this eight millimeter nut and loosen it to move this stop lock and i'll explain why i need to move that in a second it would interfere with that rivet and i really didn't want to take this scale off even though i'm never going to use it um, milled out a little bit of a clearance gap right here that way when chips come into here i can blow them out um, i extended the x lock here um, just so that you know i can get clearance as far as the Y movement goes, I got full movement this way. Coming back this way, this block interferes with this handle 1 16th of an inch before uh, the end of travel. I'm okay with that. Now moving on to the X movement and the range that I've got. So when I have, and normally this is on here permanently, when I have this, put it on here, Center of center of the uh, of uh, the vise. This way, I have four and three quarter inch of travel on this guy 
when it's set out a little bit further. When this is moved out to the max, you see here in this little T-slot, when I move this out to roughly about right here, I can get all the way out four and three quarters from center here. When I move this in to a point where this starts to block the screen, I get four and three quarter inch. So here's where I'm looking at it, right? I think I have plenty of range for small fixtures, honestly. And even if I have a larger fixture, I can shift it one way or the other and still get a DR, DRO readout. I think, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I can. Um, at any rate, um, this, this works as attended, no binding here. Uh, the only thing here is, as I move this out, you see this moving out? There is that screw, this set screw here, um, which now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably remove it because uh, it'll, it'll jam into here and, and this um, lead screw simple machine will overpower that and it'll bust it apart. So I think I'm gonna unscrew that here. Um, the only al alternative, something I could set up here, is another magnet. And the way I would do that is just a, a steel, steel plate here like a 16th inch, 18 gauge thickness or whatever, and tap that in and have a steel plate there and then put a magnet like that here. And then that way it, it would break free. Um, I think that's it. What's very interesting here, I, I do remember um, improving or replacing the lead screw on this guy with metric. I don't know why I was reading in some form. Um, but we turn this on, zero this out, and it's 1.25, so I'm gonna zero this out, and it's 1.25 millimeters for every rotation. Full rotation of the handle here. It's not quite, now it is. 1.24, 1.25, 1.25 for full, full rev, revolution. And what's nice, it goes to two decimal on millimeter. It goes to three decimal on inches. And it's 3 64ths of an inch in fraction. This does have auto off. Auto off on this unit, which is a nice thing. So that's it. That's my Z, that's my X. Do it yourself with this eye gauging, eye gauging accu marking, digital marking and depth gauge. I bought mine at Rocket over 20% off for $33 out the door. I think normally these are about $40 to $45. Um, last thing is more of a uh, question here. Why is gonna be a little bit, uh, a little more difficult than the X and the Z, I think. So I'm gonna have to machine something here on the, on the uh, Y bed and I'm gonna have to fix this um, caliper out here where I think the digital readout is here because if you have it underneath here, it's all blocked by everything, so it's gonna have to be out here. Do I really need Y for what little I do with this machine? Can I get away with just X and turn my piece uh, in the direction where I can mill in the X. Uh, I know that for doing something complicated where you need to have the fixture stay in place, um, it's best to have all access DRO. But I'm just curious, guys, w what's your opinion on that? Um, can I hold off on the Y and just roll with this and then leverage this one and start working on my tailstock on my lathe? Um, and then it's the final thought here, based on what I use this for, this is, this is enough. If I was gonna deploy this on Y, I would be under $100 in, um, in material, well, as far as the gauges are concerned. I have plenty of this aluminum. Um, I go to my metals for you and they have uh, cutoffs and stuff, uh, steel, stainless, aluminum, plate, angle, rod, tube, even DOM uh, for motorcycle builders. 
you know, I pick up scraps. They sell it per the pound, uh, really cheap. I'm very fortunate to have metals for you nearby. So really it's under a hundred dollars for all three. Uh, and many hours, bit of a headache here and there, but a lot of enjoyment to echo what I said earlier. Um, but if I was a heavy fabricator, if I needed repeatability and I needed more speed, I would spend the $500 on a three axis DRO system with a panel. And that way you can just reset and reference and do your calculations, everything all from one panel and not have to worry about these separate gauges and worrying about them getting messed up or broken. Um, I would definitely go that route, but for me, I don't need to. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have questions about any of the parts or whatever, just leave a comment. Happy to answer them. Thanks guys.